If you've clicked on this video, you're probably in one of three camps. You're thinking about getting a computer science degree. You already have one and wondering if it was worth it. Or you are just thinking, who is this guy telling people not to get a computer science degree? Well, I'm Suleiman. I'm a cloud engineer and I run my own cloud security consultancy. I actually have a computer science degree myself and I've worked in IT for a decade. And here is the thing. I genuinely don't remember the last time someone asked me about my computer science degree or anything I did at university or college. So today I'm going to give you four reasons why you shouldn't get a computer science degree. And if you stick around till the end, I'll share the exact roadmap that you should follow instead. By the way, grab my beginner's guide to the cloud. It's free linked in the description. So why shouldn't you get a computer science degree? Well, firstly, what you are learning is completely disconnected from reality. There's just too much emphasis on theory and you don't get real practical experience. When I was getting my computer science degree, we spent an entire semester learning about compiler design and theoretical algorithms. And do you know what happened when I landed my first tech job? Not once did anyone ask me to write a compiler from scratch. And the point is, four years is a long time to be studying theory. By the time that you finish with the rate of development in AI and where everything is heading in tech, there's a great chance that the industry has changed so much by then that your degree is completely worth. In fact, the World Economic Forum reported an estimated 85 million jobs are being displaced by AI in 2025, and it's only accelerating. That's why you need to be planning for that. And to be honest, this isn't just tied to a computer science degree alone. This is actually a problem with traditional education as a whole. Now, unless you're going to become a doctor or a dentist, those few specialized professions, other than that, you don't really need to get a college degree for most careers. Secondly, the cost of a computer science degree versus the return on investment doesn't make sense anymore. So in finance, return on investment or ROI just means for the money I'm putting into this asset or stock, how much am I expecting to make back? Now in the US, you're looking at a range of 30 to $60,000 per year to study computer science. And that's not including living expenses. Now, if you are lucky, after four years of studying, you'll be able to land a job after graduating and earning 50 to $60,000 dollars per year. But that's not the case for a lot of people because these spots are super competitive and there's a huge influx of people wanting to work in tech. It makes sense. It's well paid. And what these colleges don't tell you is that you can learn everything you need to know online for free or for a fraction of the cost. Just recently, I was interviewing candidates for my consultancy. Two people stood out. One had a fresh computer science degree from a top university. The other one was self-taught but had spent the last three years working on projects and working on his portfolio. Who do you think is more likely to get hired? The self-taught developer, of course. Why? Because they've had real practical experience solving actual problems. In an age where AI and online education is making the cost of information so cheap, it doesn't make sense to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to get a college degree anymore. Thirdly, the pace of learning is awfully slow. As a cloud security consultant, I get to see every day just how fast the tech industry is moving. Virtually every week, there's new features coming out of ChatGPT, Claude, and even Amazon releases a new tool here and there. There's so much development and exciting things happening in the industry as a whole. So by the time colleges update their curriculum to include these new technologies like GPT, agents, all this new stuff, those technologies will become outdated. Not only that, but I can recall studying, maybe it was in my second year, and I was thinking, I can do everything that we're studying this year in just three months. Why is it all taking so long? You're having to spend four years to study a course that I think is achievable to finish in just one year or one and a half years. Why am I, as someone who can learn fast and pick things up quickly, being penalized for that? And finally, perhaps the most crucial point, computer science degree creates a full sense of security. It used to be very prestigious, and even the colleges themselves, my mentors and the lecturers used to make me think, yes, once you graduate, companies will be fighting to hire you. But the reality, according to Forbes, many people are like David, who'd called in because his son completed a computer science degree, but he couldn't land a job in software engineering. This was supposed to be a high demand field, he complained. Now to compound on top of this, in 2023 and 2024, hiring has of course slowed down among significant tech layoffs. More than 400,000 people have been laid off. Interest rates have been high, so the cost of borrowing 
money goes up, therefore companies are less likely to invest in hiring more employees, which makes the competition for places at tech companies even more competitive, giving them the option to pick the best of the best. And in most, if not all cases, they're going to be hiring people that are ready for the job, which is actually a perfect segue for what you should do instead of getting a computer science degree. So here is a five-step roadmap that I recommend you doing instead, and I want you to forget everything you know about traditional education. Now, as someone who's worked in IT for 10 years, what really matters in tech is your ability to learn, build, and solve real problems. I originally started as a tech apprentice. I was at the bottom of the food chain. Now, of course, at 19, I was happy to just be in that environment and just working. It taught me so much, and this is funny because my peers at the time, you know, the other tech apprentices, were calling me CEO within my first few weeks of working there. I was just known as CEO because despite me being where I was, they could see me as someone who was going right to the top. And actually, I ended up being named the apprentice of the year. So I was doing something right. I then ended up working as a software engineer and working through the software development teams before moving to the cloud. And now I've specialized in cloud security. Now, when I'm hiring for my cloud security consultancy, I don't care about degrees or certificates. I don't even look for that on people's resumes. I look for experience. I care about their GitHub profiles and their portfolio. And the numbers say that 60% of employers say that they prioritize technical and transferable skills over plain education qualifications. And then if they've got a personal brand, that also matters to me. Are they posting on LinkedIn? You know, do they actually care about their craft? So what I'm telling you to do is the same path that I followed nearly 10 years ago, but just a little bit better, actually way better. So you need to choose a high demand skill that genuinely interests you. Right now, fields like cloud engineering, AI machine learning, data engineering, whatever you are interested in learning, maybe it's coding. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as you've researched and found that the industry is growing and there's a big demand for professionals, not just today, but in the next three, four, five, ten 10 years too. That's it. And by the way, if you are interested in cloud engineering, then consider joining my Cloud Engineer Academy. I'll take you from beginner with no IT experience to job ready cloud engineer in just 12 weeks. And don't take my word for it. Check out Jay's story. Jay went from banking with no technical experience to cloud hired in less than six months. Link in the description. And if you're not interested, that is is also fine too. You can actually continue to get free value and my perspectives on the cloud and tech on this channel. And if you like what I share, then drop a like. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm and make sure you follow me on LinkedIn and Instagram as well because I'm virtually posting on there every single day. Now, step two is to learn and build. Okay, so as I said before, traditional education focuses too much on theory, but you are not going to make the same mistake. You're going to be resourceful and make the most of all the information on the internet to teach yourself the fundamentals. It has never been easier to access information and most of the time it's free. All you need is an internet connection and the drive to make things happen. The problem is most people don't want to put in the time and dedication required. They get bored or they are distracted. The reality is the quality of content on YouTube alone surpasses most university classes. Experts are literally giving you industry insights, teaching you everything that you need to know and it's absolutely Absolutely free. And this is what will set you apart and actually help you land a job. You need to be building projects as part of your learning process. The theory and learning is one thing, but actually getting hands on experience and building something and testing that it works, that's where the real learning happens. Can you develop a simple app, something that people can use and test and give you feedback? And it needs to solve a problem. Don't be building to do applications or a calculator. That is BS. Recently, I saw a bunch of 18 to 19 year olds develop an app which tells you the calories of the meal you're simply eating by just taking a photo of it. And I know they're making so much money from this, seven figures a month. That should empower you to think, okay, you know, I can do the same. You'll need to set aside three to four hours each morning for deep work. No phone, no distractions. And if you don't know what projects to build, just go search on YouTube. It's all there. Just apply yourself and get to work. Stop being lazy. No one one's coming to save you. Now, for step three, you have to build your personal brand. And consider this, Mark Zuckerberg, with all of his billions of dollars, is actively building his personal brand through Instagram, sharing his MMA journey, his family time. Look at Jensen Huang, the CEO of Nvidia, creating content. They could easily be retreating into privacy.
privacy, yet they are choosing to put themselves out there now more than ever before. The same goes for Elon Musk, who's constantly engaging on X, even before he owned the platform. These billionaires understand something crucial. Your personal brand in the age of AI, it matters more than ever before. The internet has changed how we get jobs and opportunities. 10 years ago, you would send out a resume and hope for the best. That's not how it works right now. I've seen tech professionals get hired straight from LinkedIn. Why? Well, because they've built what I call a trust bank through their personal brand. When you're consistently sharing your insights, projects, learnings, journey online, you're building trust with potential employers and clients before they even meet you. It's like having a 24 seven resume that works while you sleep. And unlike traditional education, building a personal brand costs nothing but time and consistency. Think of it as your insurance policy against market uncertainty. When these layoffs hit, like they have in the last few years in tech, those with a strong personal brand tend to land on their feet way faster. Now it's not necessary because they are more skilled, but because they've built a network of people who know their work. When someone in a network hears about a job opening, they think, oh, I know someone who'd be a perfect fit for this because they've been seeing that person's work for months or even years. By the way, when I talk about building your personal brand, a lot of people get turned off. I'm not saying you need to be posting YouTube videos like I am. It will certainly help, but you can build a personal brand by just writing online. This is something that I teach in my academy. Share everything that you are doing. That's how you stand out because AI can never replicate your experiences and your struggles. They are real and personal to you. Authenticity is what people resonate with. And think about it. If you're posting your work online, the great projects that you are building to solve problems, do you really think you're going to struggle to land your first tech job? Which brings me to step number four, landing your first tech role. You won't have to send off any applications, opportunities will find their way to you. Become the person that attracts the opportunities. I'm not even looking for work and almost every day I'm being approached by recruiters and the same will happen to you. And when you are hired, the first few years will teach you what really matters. You'll quickly discover that being successful is about much more than just technical skills. You get to see how things work in the real world, what to do when services go down unexpectedly. You'll learn that sometimes the proven solution solution is better than the latest one. And understanding business impact matters more than knowing every new tool. And you don't have to believe me. You'll learn how to communicate well across different platforms, how to understand what a client really needs versus what they initially ask you for. These skills come from being in the room, handling real solutions, and sometimes making mistakes. Over time, you'll develop a sense for what works. You understand why certain approaches succeed whilst others fail. You'll learn to spot potential issues before or they become problems. Now, most importantly, you need to start seeing the bigger picture, how your decisions affect the business and its users. Now, after you spent three, four, five years in the industry, you are ready for step number five. This is when you can start thinking about working for yourself. The timing here is crucial. You now have real industry experience. You understand how businesses work. You've built a professional network and you've hopefully saved some money from your nine to five. So start small by taking on freelance projects whilst keeping your main job. Use your network work to find clients who need your expertise. Focus on solving specific problems that you've become an expert in through your industry experience. Now, as your client base grows, you can quit your nine to five once you're earning the same amount from your freelance projects. I followed this exact path and built my cloud security consultancy. Remember, the market pays for value and not for effort. By this point, you're not just offering technical skills, you're offering years of practical business experience and solving real problems, tangible value, and you'll be paid very well for this. So. Do I genuinely believe that computer science degree is completely worthless? On the whole, yes, especially if you are starting now. You should be fast tracking your learning online and get to building projects as soon as possible, ones that solve real problems. Now, in some ways, a computer science degree is good for people that can't learn on their own and they need structured learning approach set out for them with some support from their peers. And if you're looking to get internships at big tech companies, then studying computer science degree at college can definitely help you get those opportunities. And if you're very good, they'll offer you a job when you graduate. But these internships are very competitive and there's no guarantee you can get a place. Now, if you want a roadmap to become a cloud engineer in 2025, then check out this video right here because the industry has changed a lot since I landed my first role all those years ago. And I break down exactly what you need to do step by step.